Here's a tricky couple of problems from Kleckner and Kalenko on Introduction to Mechanics. Here's the diagram. There are three masses, M1, M2, M3. M2 sits on top of M1, M3 hangs down over the pulley. If the whole thing is being pulled to the right with a force F, there's no friction and the rope and pulley have negligible mass. The first part of the problem asks what force is required to keep M3 from falling. Since this is an F equals MA problem, we're going to start with a free body diagram for each object. This little mess is the force diagram for M1. Let's hope we don't have to use it. The force diagrams for mass 2 and mass 3 are much simpler. On mass 3, it wasn't immediately obvious to me whether there's going to be a normal force and if so, which way it's going to point. What are the possible unknowns? Well, we're looking for the applied force F, so that's certainly on the list. But we can also imagine tension, the X accelerations of mass 1, mass 2, and mass 3, the Y acceleration of mass 3, and that possible normal force between masses 1 and 3. So to solve this problem, what objects are we going to take and use F equals MA on? The obvious choices are M1, M2, M3, but we also could possibly use a combination. Newton's laws apply to all objects. When two or more objects move together, we can often treat them as a single object. In this part of the problem, all three masses move together. So we have a lot of options. For this part of the problem, we know that mass 3 is not moving up or down, so its acceleration is zero. We also know that all three objects move together, so A1, A2, A3 are all the same, let's just call it A. Since we know acceleration 3 in the y direction is zero, the F equals MA in the y direction for mass 3 looks very simple and gives us tension equals M3G. Likewise, the force diagram for M2 looks simple in the x direction. Solving F equals MA for that in the x direction gives us the acceleration. It's M3 over M2 times G. Again, since all three objects move together, we can treat them as one object. If we do so, we get the required force from F equals MA, and we have our final answer. That's much nicer than using force diagram 1. Now for problem 220, assume that the applied force is zero, and the system is released from rest. Find the acceleration of M1. Now A sub Y3 is not zero. A1 still equals A3, but they do not equal A2. The x equation for M2 is the same, but the equation for M3 is changed. So with tension, A1, A2, and AY3, we have four unknowns. We'll need four equations to solve that. This is the hardest part of a physics problem, figuring out which equations to use and write down. F equals MA for M1 is still a mess. It's easy to get bogged down in the interactions between M1 and M3, such as that normal force that might be there, the tension might be at an angle, so the trick is to avoid all that. The secret is to consider the horizontal motion of M1 and M3 as a single object. They aren't a single object in the y direction, but in the x direction they are moving together. If we do this, the equation is short. Only T is acting on the M1-M3 pair, and that horizontally. So now we have the equations in x forces for M2 and also for the M1-M3 combination. The y equation for M3 is also helpful. So that's three equations, but we have four unknowns. We need another equation. The missing piece is that the accelerations are all related by the rope. Now relative motion can be hard to keep straight, so here's a visual trick I use sometimes. First, imagine we hold M1 still and move M2 to its new position. That's the upper drawing here. Notice that M2 moves to the right a distance delta x2, and M3 moves down the same amount. For the second step, the lower picture shows M2 in black holding still while M1 and M3 both move to the right and M3 moves up. Putting these together, you can see that overall M3 moves down 
delta x2 minus delta x1. Since that is true, we can divide by time, or take the derivative if you know how, to get velocity 3y equals v2 minus v1, and repeating that process gives us the equation we need, a sub 3y equals a2 minus a1. That's our fourth equation. The physics is now done, and we have algebra to solve. I won't go through all the steps, but to outline it, you would take equation A and use it to get rid of T in equations B and C, and then take equation D and use it to replace A3Y in equation C. You're left with B and C modified, two equations and two unknowns, and you can take it from there. Here's the final answer so you can check your work. Finally, this was a challenging problem. It was meant to be. It was in my MIT Honors Physics 1 textbook. Don't worry if you have to try several approaches before you hit on something like this. There's more than one way to get to the answer, and some of them are prettier than others. Trust me, it looks way more straightforward in hindsight. I hope you found this example helpful. Thanks for watching, and good luck with physics!